This is the third time the Discovery has uh, had a problem getting off the launch pad, and so we're still uh, awaiting word on when they will try to launch Discovery again. Bob, Donna? Tony, would you expect this to have the effect of diminishing uh, support for NASA? It might among critics of NASA, but what we will hear from uh, Dan Golden, the NASA administrator, and others at the uh, Kennedy and Johnson and various space centers is that, the, is that the system worked correctly, that the safety measures, especially the safety measures that were put into place after the Challenger disaster, worked as they should. Everything was not working properly, and so computers shut the engines down. It is a a preventive measure that prevented the kind of disaster that occurred with Challenger and as I say NASA will argue that despite what critics say the system worked. Tony you said the astronauts will get ready to go back to Houston do we have any idea how long the delay could be before Discovery could go up? What we saw before uh, in a previous uh, shuttle uh, scrub this year uh, when the main engines fired was about a two to three week long delay. What this does though is, is create a, a downstream problem for NASA. NASA had planned to launch eight shuttles this year. This was to be the fifth and what that may do is, is back, uh, back that up some. That is uh, Bill Reedy coming out right now. He is the, uh, the pilot for the, uh, the shuttle Discovery. This was to be his second flight. He uh, flew in January of 1992. Uh, again, you could tell some of the, uh, the frustration having gone through this uh, before, but what we've heard from the astronauts is they want everything working correctly before they go into space, and so they will simply wait until everything is in order before they go, go back and try again. As I was saying about the launch schedule, what this has probably done is push at least one shuttle mission uh, that was scheduled for November into next year and uh, could, in fact, go ahead and delay the uh, Hubble Space Telescope Repair Mission, which is currently, currently scheduled for uh, December, push that into December, or into January, rather. Tony, was there potential for danger in what happened this morning? There is always potential for danger, but NASA said everything worked as it was supposed to work. The, uh, the shuttle was safe very quickly, very routinely. Uh, the astronauts appeared to be in, in no danger. There was never any indication of any fire on the launch pad. And so uh, while space travel, space launches are uh, inherently dangerous, uh, there appeared to be nothing out of the ordinary this morning. You know, Tony, when I was looking at a report this morning, it said that they would be in space for nine or ten days. That's one of the first times I recall seeing that, where they had that flexibility of the day, but they've been adding an extra day quite regularly, but I don't recall seeing that they really had ever put it like that, that nine or ten days. Was that something they talked about before, and will we see that some more? I think we will, we will see that frequently. What happens is, uh, once the uh, shuttle gets on orbit, NASA always wants to have two extra days in terms of fuel, consumables, food, and, and the rest on the shuttle in case there's a, a weather problem in landing or, or some other problem for landing. But what we are seeing now is uh, that there is a conservation of fuel, conservation of energy, uh, electricity, and the like on the, the shuttle. And, and once you get the shuttle into space, if you can squeeze another day or two in space, there is additional science that can be done. And so NASA has found that it can do this and is uh, doing it more regularly. Yeah, they sure have been. We've seen that uh, a number of times already. Tony Clark. Thank you. Just ahead on Morning News, a story about something military men know well, an about face. Before liftoff, suddenly fell silent this morning at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and a journey to space ended before it began. It was NASA's third try. CNN correspondent Tony Clark joins us with the latest. Tony. Bob, it is no doubt frustrating for folks at NASA. This was the third time, as you say, that NASA has tried to launch Discovery, and everything appeared to be going smoothly. The weather was beautiful at the Kennedy Space Center. Weather forecaster said it was 100%. There was a 100% probability of good weather for the uh, liftoff. As the seconds ticked down, everything seemed to be running smoothly. But then, in the final seconds, as George Diller showed us, here's what happened. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. Go for main engine start. Three main engines up and burning. Three, we have a cutoff. Pass the BFS, 101, LDB shows one. 
Ground controllers say that apparently a sensor monitoring the flow of fuel into engine number two on the shuttle indicated that there was a problem. Onboard computers on Discovery then automatically shut down Discovery's engines, and uh, the, as you see here, the retractable arm went back, the shuttle was saved, and the astronauts were brought out. It was a disappointed crew that came out of the shuttle. This is the third time they have emerged from the shuttle after a scrub, but they will try again. No launch date has been set, but in the past, it, when situations like this have occurred, it has taken two to three weeks before another launch attempt is made. This is only the fourth time in NASA's shuttle, 12 year shuttle history that main engines have fired and there's been a main engine cutoff. What has happened in the past, in fact, uh, with one of the shuttle launches earlier this year, is the engines had to be replaced, and that was one of the reasons for the two to three week long delay. NASA is scheduling a news conference around 1.30 Eastern time today to uh, discuss discovery and its schedule and the problem that led to today's uh, scrubbing of the mission. And of course, we will be covering that for you. I'm Tony Clark at CNN Center. Bob, Donna? Tony, granted the system worked as you have noted previously just exactly as it's supposed to. Nevertheless, won't NASA be faulted for first the delay and secondly for the uh, probably significant expenditure of money that the delay costs? This uh, scrubbing fuels criticism of NASA. NASA often says the Discovery, the shuttle system rather, is a very complicated system. And after the Challenger disaster, a number of safeguards were put in. NASA will tell us, and we expect in a special at uh, noon today, Eastern Time, to hear from NASA, hear words that NASA's system, the shuttle system, worked exactly as it was supposed to work. But this uh, scrubbing, the third scrubbing of Discovery's mission, followed on the heels of, a, of an unrelated but uh, space-related uh, problem with a Titan missile exploding, uh, adds fuel to critics of the space program during these tight budget times, criticism that NASA will be forced to respond to. Tony, and while that's the case, isn't it true that there are a lot of things that need to be checked when something like this happens that contributes to the delay? What do they do? Just start from the ground up and start checking things? Now, they go through a process right now. In fact, the process started at, immediately at the point of the uh, shutdown where the, the shuttle itself was safe. The uh, fuel is taken out of the shuttle, and then they go in to the, uh, look at the sensor, the uh, fuel sensor, and find out exactly what the problem was, and in, in some cases, uh, replace that uh, part, find out what the problem was. But because the engines fired, and, and engines fired, though we go through the countdown, the engines, in fact, start firing at T-minus six seconds. Because they have begun firing, what has happened in the past is NASA has had to go in and simply replace those engines with engines that have not been fired, and that leads to the, uh, the delay. All right, Tony Clark, thanks very much.